Boston Trucker here. We are getting loaded, preloaded for tomorrow with stumps and brush. So now I can sit here, tell you a story on company time, which is nice. Usually I make my videos after work, the ones where I'm just talking, I park the truck. I would never do that in company time, but you should call my company and tell them that I'm making videos on company time. They'd probably get a kick out of that and probably probably tell you to piss off. Um, sometimes the comments really sent me down a rabbit hole. A guy wrote a comment. We'll call this we'll call this video uh, the, my early years in trucking. I got a comment. The guy said, "I guess I said this in the last video. Uh, I used to run 4,500 miles to 5,000 miles a week at one point." And the guy wrote, he said. Now you might want to edit that comment. You know, unless you were sm smoking a pipe, there's no way you did that. And he's right. I, I do want to edit that comment. Um, that wasn't actually um, true. It was more like 5,400 miles a week. Is what it was really like. And later on, a few years down the road, I slowed down to about 4,600 miles a week. And I'm going to explain to you how I did that without taking drugs, without sucking on toothpicks, without taking ephedrine, didn't, pure adrenaline really. And um, it wasn't a big deal. And I'm gonna tell you how, you di how I did it because it's, there are other guys doing a lot more than that. Trust me, I was no, uh, was no super trucker. I didn't have a big fast truck. And uh, it was expected, it wasn't, it just was expected, just what you did, what I did. And um, so my first driving job, that was an hourly job. I was 18, it was December 1988. I had just got my class one license, which is now called the class A. And I worked for a tractor trailer body repair shop called East Coast Truck and Trailer. They're still in business right now, but now they are a truck parts shop. And they had a single axle Ford L800. It had a Detroit in it, a five and two. And uh, if you're a youngster, you're probably gonna go, wow, Detroit, badass. And it wasn't badass, it was just a little shitbox truck. But I made it my own and I loved it. I was driving a truck and I would go, I would bobtail to different companies and pick up their damaged trailers and I would bring it back and pulled you know vans flatbeds any kind of trailer to damage but they were empty it wasn't hauling loads with them and i would get a ride to pick up damaged tractors rider truck rentals united truck rentals uh land transport rykoff sexton and i pick up their damaged tractor mostly day cabs a couple bunks nothing nothing crazy nothing heavy hauling you know some our model max some fords uh, Rykoff Sexton had a bunch of GMC Brigadiers, and I bring the trucks back, and uh, I did that for nine months, and that was a really great job. It was on the clock, and <clears throat> I did that for nine months. So one of their customers was this company called Land Transport in Framingham, Mass, three thirty three Beaver Street. Look it up. I think Estes is there now, and I went to work for Land as a local driver. This is maybe August 89, I'm still 18, you know? And their local trucks were mostly Fords, L800s, rentals, everything was uh, Lily, Lily Lease Rentals, and some internationals, day cabs. And I would, uh, I'd haul the loads the road guys brought in. Usually it was paper loads, sugar loads, coming out of Baltimore or out of Brooklyn. I'd haul those to, to the grocery warehouses. Uh, sometimes I get to drive the road guys' trucks if uh, day cab wasn't available. And those are always like the highlights of my whole week because I get to uh, feel like I'm a road guy, you know, and drive the nice trucks. And, um, you know, I didn't appreciate back then, you know, having your own truck and it's like your home. But I would get in these guys' trucks and I would treat it with res their trucks with respect. And, um, you know, I would become friends with these guys and I looked up to these guys. These are the road guys, you know? And my dad was a road guy and I grew up 
driving over the road. So I could talk the talk, I guess. You know, I mean, I was a kid, but they were very respectful of me and I was respectful of them. And all I wanted to do was go over the road. So I, I planned on working there until I was 21. I mean, when I turned 21, I would drive over the road. But what happened was a few months into the job, probably right before my 19th birthday, so I was still 18, a road guy called in sick. And my truck at the time I was driving every day, at that point was a international cab over 9670. It was an old road truck. Um, and it was nothing, nothing to look at. I got pictures of it. everything I have, everything I talk about, I have pictures to document that. You can look back at my old videos, trucks I've driven. Um, didn't even have a mattress in the truck. Just had this, there's nothing. Just a, it's a shit box international cab over. And the boss said, Hey, I got a guy called in sick. We did a lot of TJ Maxx loads. And, um, I got a TJ Maxx load, five stop New Jersey tomorrow, and probably have you pick up, come back. Uh, do you want to go? I said, yeah, I can go. I mean, I can, I mean, I'm not supposed to leave the state. He goes, well, you go to Rhode Island all the time in New Hampshire. I go, yeah, that's true. I sent you up to Maine. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. So got in the cab over, didn't have didn't have any bedding with me. Didn't have my shower. I didn't have a shower bag. I wasn't even a road guy. I was a local guy. Um, went out that night. Picked up the New Jersey load. Head down to New Jersey. And uh, I was pretty excited. It's pretty awesome. Got to West Carwell, New Jersey that night around 1 in the morning. Went to bed. Unloaded five stops. Now, back then, everything was floor loaded, which meant there were no pallets. Everything was... Loaded on the floor, from the front to the back to the ceiling. You hand unloaded all the cases. TJ Maxx stores, they were rollers. They'd put rollers on the truck and you would shoot the boxes down the roller to a store clerk who would check them in. The rollers would get backed up and you'd push the boxes just to annoy them if they weren't going fast enough. And that's something I learned from my dad because he used to do Zare stores. And um, did my five stops. Went over to Kearney, New Jersey, load another floor load. I mean, by the end of the day, you were filthy, soaking wet, sweat, dirty, dust. I didn't even have a change of clothes with me. And dispatch said, um, that's going to TJ Maxx in Evansville, Indiana, to the warehouse. And they had main, their main warehouse was in Evansville. So now I'm on my way to Indiana. I'm 18 years old, cab over international. Not a cool truck, because everybody had cab overs. It's kind of like, if you see a Freightliner now, you don't go, ooh, Freightliner. It's just, it was just a truck. I head west, go down 287, 78, 81, to Carlisle, took a shower, bought a couple t-shirts, and head to Evansville, across the PA Pike, 70, all the way across. I remember going, I stopped at Buckeye Lake, Ohio, the first trip. It's a truck stop there. I think it was Buckeye Lake. Might have been Washington Square, Washington House. And I remember I remember scanning the trucks up and I seen all the lot lizards going from truck to truck to truck. And just it was a, it was a crazy sight. It was like I mean we didn't I didn't have a television with me. It was no cell phones, so that was my entertainment. Anyways, I made it to Evansville the next day, next night. And loaded Evansville back to uh, Massachusetts. So that was my first over the road trip. And after that, I stayed over the road for them. And I stayed in that truck. Never got a mattress for that truck. I ended up getting a big thick piece of foam that I had in my parents' attic. And that was my mattress. And I was happy with that. And um, I started running Jersey all the time to Evansville. And then I got a kind of a dedicated run out of Evansville I would pedal the uh, South Carolina TJ Maxx stores, Spartanburg, Columbia, um, Charleston, Hilton Head. I'd empty out in Hilton Head, and then I would go up to Georgetown, South Carolina, up to, uh, I think it was International Paper, load rolls of paper, and haul it back to Massachusetts to... Um, 
up to Wilmington, Mass, or Bicknell Fuller and Peabody, Mass. Those are heavy loads. I mean, you know, 46 to 48,000 pounds. Those cab those old trucks didn't have any power, like 350 horsepower, maybe. I didn't know, I didn't, didn't know any different, you know what I mean? That was big power. And I did that for a while. Did that for shit. Till I was 21. And then I was dating this, uh, I'm, there was a truck driver there named Jim Smith. He worked there part-time at land. He had a full-time job driving for trans gas tankers, and they lay him off every year, and he worked part-time at land. So Jim went and bought a truck. He leased a truck from Shanu, 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 I don't know. My dad says Shanu, I say Shanu. Shanu, which is a meat company in St. Paul, Minnesota. And Jim ran the truck for a few months, and when he got called back to go to Transgas, his idea was to put a driver in the truck. And I was dating his uh, his cousin. She was my girlfriend. And so I went to work for Jim. And so I took his truck and trailer. He, Jim lived in New Hampshire. Took the truck and trailer up to Minnesota and started hauling for Shannon. Went to orientation. It's hauling uh, box beef on the floor. It wasn't swinging beef. All box beef. Must have been about a month. And I needed a new DOT card, physical card. And I had to go through Shanu's doctor in Minnesota. And I go to get my physical. He takes a look at my hand. Birth defect. I want to know what to do with 10 fingers. Driving with this hand is as natural as you driving with your 10 fingers. Tells me I got to get a waiver. So he reports it to Shano. Now I can't get a wait. Now I, how do I get a waiver? I got to go back to Massachusetts, and he says it's gonna could take three to six months. So now I'm up, I'm screwed, right? So I call up Jim. Jim says, let me come up, let me let me figure something out. I call him back that night. He says, here's what we're gonna do. He goes, don't tell Shano this. I want you to bobtail down to Evansville, Indiana, overnight, and we're gonna go work for land. I said, okay. He goes, take Shannon's bingo card, and when you get to Evansville, staple it over uh, Land's bingo card, which is what I did. And I put staples all around it, which is illegal as hell. And start working for Land. Come out of Evansville, first load. Now they get a warehouse in Las Vegas, right? Wow, uh, TJ Maxx. So first load. Out to Las Vegas. This is my first load going really west of Indiana on my own, which is great. And I'm in, and, oh, and Jim's truck, by the way. It's a brand new, back then, nice truck. Uh, I think it was a 92 FLD 120 Freightliner, flat top bunk, 60 inch. I'm short, I could pretty much stand up in the truck, just hunched over a little bit. Beautiful truck. Big power. I think I had a four and a quarter cat in it. Um, so I head out to uh, Vegas, first load. First load, after I dump off in uh, Las Vegas, I got to go down to Henderson, Nevada, pick up a load of uh, Levi jeans from Levi Strauss. Pick up a drop trailer, sealed, cable sealed. Five drops. First drop, Denver. Second drop, Minneapolis. Pittsburgh, wait, Denver, Minneapolis, Chicago, because I had to go to Marshall Field in Chicago, which was a freaking nightmare. And uh, you don't forget those nightmare stops. That's one of them. The other one in Chicago I always hated was uh, Dominic's. That's another story for another time. Um, so Minneapolis, Denver, Minneapolis, Chicago, Pittsburgh, DC. So I get up to Denver, first load, Break the cable seal. Now the floor load. Loaded front to back, cases of jeans. Big cases. Almost like the size of uh, box beef cases, if you all box beef. And they're heavy. They're like 60 pound boxes. I open up the door. I'm looking at the cases on the tail. And they're labeled DC. And it's supposed to be Denver. I'm like, what the hell? Why is, why is DC on the tail? I start going through the cases. They got DC on the tail. I'm like, nah, there's no way they... There's no way they loaded this thing backwards. I make my way through all the DC boxes to the next one. 
It's Pittsburgh. They loaded the trailer backwards. So, I mean, back then, it did what it took to get the job done, you know? Right now, I probably would have been like, okay, well, somebody's going to have to reload this, and it's not going to be me, and um, wake me when you're done. But back then, you know, I was 21, and that's that's not what happened back then. You just did it. So, I'm in Denver. I start dropping down all the DC cases to the ground. I climb over the load. I'm pushing stuff to the side and making a tunnel through the load. I go to the nose, and I find the Denver stuff. And I lifted them up over and pushing them back, probably like 200 cases, probably the two or three at a time, pushed them back. And I did that for the entire load. The entire freaking load. It took me a week to get that load off. And so I hauled for land for a while with Jimmy's truck. And I can't remember the reason, but he ended up hiring his brother-in-law to drive the truck. And I went back to land. And now I was a uh, an official roadie because they gave me one of the conventionals which to me mate to me meant you made it you know I know a lot of great drivers there I mean a lot you know a lot of guys I looked up to back then I'll give you some names John Barlow um, Bobby Dorman John Daniels Bob Beebe the three brothers all truckers Russell Bruce Wilbur Bruce Steve Bruce uh, a lot of guys, Wayne Forget, Gary Benoya, Mike Pesha, and uh, I was I was considered one of them. I had an international conventional with a hood, I had a small bunk. I was one of the guys. It was awesome, and I started running Evansville to Vegas. Sometimes you go down to LA. So let me tell you how I ran those miles and what was expected. And it wasn't a big deal. So, if you go from Worcester, Massachusetts to Las Vegas, it's about 2,700 miles. If you figure, I used to always figure it like this. You would average 50 miles an hour. First of all, the speeds were not that fast back then. The trucks weren't fast. So 50 miles an hour was a good bet. So you have to take 2,700 miles divided by 50, it's roughly about a 54 hours of driving in the seat. 54 hours is a little over two days, right? That would take me three days to get there. So if I left, let's say, in the morning or, you know, before sunup, and you ran 900 miles the first day, which we did, there was no e-logs. There were paper logs. And, uh, Nobody ran legal. I didn't even know how to run legal. I didn't even know how to do a recap back then. I'd just make it look legal. Like my fuel slips were on the same date. That's all I really cared about. I didn't worry about tolls. If I had a toll with a time stamped on it, I'd take my pen and I'd poke a hole through the time. Turn that in. My comp the company didn't care. So you run 900 miles a day. So if I left Boston in the morning, I'd make it down to... Tennessee line that night, maybe Kings Pine, Tennessee, maybe Knoxville. That's a good day. That's an 18 hour day. You can do 900 miles, 18 hours, easy. Go to bed five or six hours, get up the next day, do 900 miles to 1,000 miles. Make Amarillo, Texas, second day. Go to bed five or six hours. Now it's 21. I mean, I had a lot of energy. I mean, now I can't even uh, work nine hours without. Start yawning, getting tired. Back then, I had energy, I had stamina. And uh, make it to Amarillo your second night. Get up in the morning, run Texas, New Mexico, Arizona. Make it to Kingman. Maybe make it to Kingman and go to bed. Get up early the next morning. Go up over the Hoover Dam, which we used to be able to do back then. And, uh, you know, before 9-11, we used to drive over the Hoover Dam with the truck. It was great. You do windy road, come down into the dam, right across the top of the dam, up the hill, right up into Vegas. Three days, okay? Three days, 2,700 miles. Drop and hook. Take a half hour. Half hour drop and hook. Tops, right? Three days home. Six and a half days 
round trip, 5,400 miles. I did a weekly. Sometimes when you get to Vegas, they tell you to grab an empty trailer, head down to LA, get a load. It was never the good parts of LA. It was always off of I-10, Alameda Street, you know, the shitty parts where the homeless people live. There's that little truck stop with the scale there. I used to load fish out of there later on, a few years later. Go down there, load a floor load, front to back. Get out of there, make it up to Barstow, California. And that was always a good place to start your next day. You get up to Barstow that night, get a good night's sleep, get up four o'clock in the morning and start boogieing home. He said, Ch wait for the sun's coming up by the time you get over to Arizona by Needles, Kingman, sun's coming up. Make it to Amarillo that night, no problem. It's no problem. Amarillo. The next night you're up in Knoxville. The next night you're up in Maybrook, New York. That's the third night. And you're four hours home. That's it. it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like um, just, just how it was. It wasn't uh, being a super truck. It was meant. It was just sitting in the seat and and driving. There was nothing else to do. I mean, it wasn't like uh, I could sit around and play on my phone. There was no phones. We didn't have cell phones. Didn't have GPS. I had a Rand McNally map. I had some cassette tapes for my radio. There was no satellite radio. The entertainment was driving and talking on the CB radio. That's it. That's how I did that. So don't question me. I don't lie. I'm the most honest person on YouTube. If I tell you something, you can take it to the bank. That's all I gotta say about that. So I think my next video will be, I will talk about a video coming up, we'll say, the early years. I'll talk about my Bud Meyer days, 1992 to 98, with a year in between driving for Walmart. I'll tell you about that. And those are my best years. Those are my favorite years of trucking. Those, those years made me who I am today, I believe. And I also have a really good story a trucker story but it's a real story that'll blow everybody's minds and a few people who know me know what I'm talking about and will agree something happened to me in 94 that will just blow your minds the story it's a crazy story about me and a girl were hey, riding with me for three months in the truck crazy story could be a movie so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you for sending me down that rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. I appreciate it. Everybody right now, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And uh, thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Boston Trucker out.